After a lot of requests, I brought the Skill Brushless Generation 2 Impact Driver in to face the M12 Fuel Generation 3. As you can see on these tools, there's a wire coming out of them, and that is because I opened the tools up, as you'll see in this picture right here, and found the negative wire coming from the battery into the tool, and intercepted it so I could measure amps going into the tool. I want to know how many watts of power were being pulled out of the batteries into these tools while they were performing various activities. So we have these two tools. I'll be testing the skill impact driver with a two amp hour battery and their four amp hour battery. I'll be testing the Milwaukee with the 2.0 red lithium and the 4.0. In a future test, I'll be testing the Milwaukee with some aftermarket batteries like this 2.5 amp hour as well as this Waitley 6 amp hour battery. We'll also be testing some of Milwaukee's own high output batteries as well. Let's start the testing out with the M12 and a two amp hour red lithium battery. As you can see at the top left, we have our hydraulic gauge measuring pressure. We also have a temperature monitor, although it's not hooked up in this first test. You'll see it on following test, hook up to the anvil of the impact driver. At the very bottom left, you see a voltage from the battery of the tool into the tool and an amp reading from the battery of the tool into the tool. Using those two measurements, we'll get watts at the end of the video. Let's look at this test as a PSI graph now. So that was 590 PSI with the Milwaukee M12 and 2 amp hour battery. Now let's try it again with a 4 amp hour battery. The 4 amp hour battery makes a pretty significant difference adding 100 PSI to the previous score of 590. But what about this skill? What about this underdog. Let's take a look at it. This is the skill with a two amp hour battery and after this we're going to show the four amp hour battery. Well it appears as though our skill friend has actually gotten on top here even with a two amp hour battery. Now let's look at the four amp hour battery for skill. Across the entire curb, the 4 amp hour skill stays above everybody else and even closes 10 PSI higher than the 2 amp hour. Okay, now that we know the power of the impact driver, let's check the RPM. Now that we know the RPM and we know the power, how do these impact drivers deal with small fasteners? The Milwaukee has a higher RPM, but the skills seem to build more power in the long run. So how does that translate to putting in a whole bunch of decking screws? Let's find out. That's pretty daggone close between the M12 4 amp hour, M12 2 amp hour, and Skill 4 amp hour. You're talking about a second or less. And with the Skill 2 amp hour, although it was last, it was only last by a couple of seconds. So any one of these drills could be interchanged and do this job in pretty much the same exact way. The Skill is definitely the largest appearing 
impact driver in the group. I've included the HyperTuff as well here. You can see it's a little bit taller, but as far as front to back, they're pretty similar in size. And if we take a look around the back of them, you can see that they're really, really similar in size. The HyperTuff actually looks a little bit wider because of the barrel battery, even though the M12 has a barrel battery as well. The HyperTuff just seems a little bit girthier from the back end and pretty much the same thing. Not very noticeable in my opinion. As you guys recall, I said we were taking voltage readings and amp readings during our test. So what I'm going to do now is show you how much power these impact drivers are drawing out of the battery throughout that dyno test. You might be a little bit surprised at what I found. As you see this graph unfold, you see that the Milwaukee 4 amp hour is on the top, followed by the Skill 4 amp hour, and then the Milwaukee 2 amp hour, down to the bottom, the Skill 2 amp hour. The interesting thing is that you see that the Milwaukee is drawing a lot of wattage out of that battery, even though the Skill actually came out on top. So let's find out how efficient these impact drivers are by seeing how many PSI they cranked out per watt. So what we're looking at now is on the left side of the screen you can see numbers counting up to two. That is how many PSI these impact drivers are cranking out per watt of power that they consume. So let's see how these play out over the full scope of this test. It's definitely interesting to see how these things pan out especially when the skill was so powerful and as you can see the skill ends up on top with their 2 amp hour, and then the 4 amp hour is also on top of the Milwaukee's. I can only speculate that the excess RPM that the Milwaukee's run is to blame for this lack of efficiency. This is a list of all the impact drivers that I've tested so far, and I'm going to put them all on the same list, the 18 volt, the potential 40 volt in the future, all the way down to 12 volts. We're just going to put them all on the same list until it becomes unmanageable, then I'll split it apart if needed. We have the Warrior, Skill, Milwaukee, and HyperTuff. Let's take a look. The Skill is the model ID 6744A-00, and the Milwaukee is the 3453-20. We have our height, length, and weight. And the Milwaukee, although it's a little bit shorter, it's also a little bit longer, but it weighs a little bit less. And this is with the 4 amp hour batteries. So it actually weighs over 200 grams less than the Skill, so a little bit easier to handle. As for points for weight, which are subtracted from the total score, the skill has 23 points, and Milwaukee is 19.74 and some change, so it comes in a little bit less. I put the HyperTuff Brushless on this list as well. It has the lowest weight score because it's only 901 grams, as opposed to the Milwaukee's 1125 and the skill's 1360. In the category of maximum PSI on the hydraulic gauge, uh, the Warrior had 600, the skill had 710, the Milwaukee shortly behind the skill at 695, and at 10 seconds, the HyperTuff Brushless had 260. When that's translated to points, the skill gets 35.5 points and the Milwaukee gets 34.75. The cost of the skill kit is $80. In Milwaukee, I took half of the kit cost that I purchased at $100. And that comes out to 14.6 and some change for skill as far as points for cost. And for Milwaukee, it's 10.89. It appears to have a little bit less cost effectiveness compared to the skill. So in total, the skill comes out at 27.125, putting it slightly ahead of the Milwaukee at 25.9. These were both tested with a 4 amp hour battery. This might be updated in the future with different batteries. The HyperTuff is way down the list at 8.272, mainly because of its low score in the PSI category. Even though I do like the HyperTuff compared to these two impact drivers ahead of it, it really doesn't compare as far as power. One of the unspoken things in this test is the fact that Milwaukee M12, no matter how it does in the test, it has a huge line of tools. So if you're in the trades or any profession like construction, having the array of tools makes this a little bit more valuable than some of the competition. Now, Skill is building their array of tools, but it is nothing like the M12 line. The M12 line is built for professional tradesmen. They have specific trade tools for plumbers, for HVAC guys. There's a lot of stuff that's specifically built for guys who work for a living with tools. 
But if you take that away, the skill wins the competition. Now, I want to know what you think in the comments. First of all, if you enjoyed this video, please put a like on the video. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. Taking a second to put a like really helps the video. I have an array of Milwaukee batteries that I'm going to test with this M12 and we're going to compare. We just did two today, but I have a few fakes I got off Amazon and I have the high output 5 amp hour I'm going to try as well. As for the 12 volt skill line, I do have their small circular saw. If I can get a couple more circular saws, maybe the M12 circular saw and the DeWalt, I'll put a test together there. Of course, we're going to do some testing of individual tools just by themselves, like the brushless bower miter saw I might do just by itself because I don't see setting up a competition for that. Guys and girls, I hope you enjoyed this video. Please tune in next time as we test more tools. And uh, God bless each and every one of you.